In this episode, we're comparing the network technician versus the network administrator. So we're going to look at these two job roles. Also, we're going to look into some of their responsibilities and the skill sets that one should have at each of these positions. So stay tuned and don't forget to click like, subscribe and that notification bell. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone who's looking to get into the IT industry, whether it's for a career change or you're just interested, I think you come to the right place. So when comparing the network technician to the network admin, these two positions work very close together. So they do have a lot of similarities and some subtle differences. Some of the main differences is going to depend on the organization that you're at. If you're at a smaller organization, you may do something totally different than if you're at a larger organization. For example, if you're a network technician and you're at a knock, you could be supporting more than one customer or more than one company. Or you could be a technician at an organization where you only support that organization. Those two roles, even though they have the same title, their duties are going to be way different. And the same goes for the network admin position. Without wasting any more time, the first thing we need to compare is to get a quick definition of what these two positions are within the networking department. So first, we're going to look at the network technician. So this network technician role is usually what I like to call the first line of defense for the networking department. So what happens is when an issue comes up, usually the network tech will be the first to get notified or the first to be informed about their issue. And then so they get the call, then they start working on the issue. And during this time, if they're not able to resolve the issue, then they may have to reach out to the next line of defense, which will be that network admin or that network engineer. And then when the tech is not getting called, they're probably going to be the ones that's responsible for monitoring the network. So the whole team kind of put chips in and monitor everything. But this network technician may have a daily checklist where they're coming in and they're just looking over the systems, making sure there's not anything they need to be proactive on instead of being reactive. And then also another responsibility of this tech, they may be involved in some sort of hardware set setup, or they may be the one that's racking and stacking devices when the admin and engineer configures their devices, or even they may be involved in some initial setup or some basic configurations. And then the network administrator role. So this is going to be the next level up from the technician. So their responsibilities usually includes working on network issues that was assigned from the technician. So things that was escalated from that technician, which means that the tech may have gotten an issue and wasn't able to resolve it. So they sent it up to the admin. And then the admin, usually the higher you go up, the more responsibility. So the admin will usually have access to more tools and more devices. So if, for example, a tech coming in, no experience, you may not have access to any of the core devices. For anyone that don't know what the core devices is, that's pretty much the backbone of the network. That's something where you don't want someone without no experience on the network being able to go in and configure things on. Because if they make a mistake on that core, a lot of times that core is going to bring down your whole network. So you don't want that to happen within your network infrastructure. So the network administrator will also have different projects that they may be working on or things that they're implementing on the network. And then as a technician, you get a little bit of projects also. But as you advance, those projects start to get a little bit more complex. And then also this network administrator, they'll be the ones responsible for doing more advanced configurations and troubleshooting on the network. So anything like if you're troubleshooting on the network and let's say, like I mentioned before, the cores, let's say something need to be changed on the core. A lot of times it's probably going to be that network admin or that network engineer that's making that change on the core. And then also you're going to have other devices on your network that's not just a regular router or a regular switch. You may have a net scale or you may have different types of devices in your data center or in your network infrastructure. So some of those devices as a network technician you're not going to be given the access to those devices until your skill set advance and progress to that network admin and then that network engineer. Sorry to interrupt this episode. According to my YouTube analytics, 84% of my viewers are not subscribed. If I provided value to you in any one of my episodes and you're not subscribed, please consider doing so as it does help out the channel. And also, if you're listening to this right now in your favorite podcasting app, please leave me a review and share this with a friend. Now back to the episode. So the next thing we're going to compare is the daily responsibilities for these two positions. 
So on a day-to-day -day basis as a network technician, you may be the one that's doing most of the racking and stacking, which means that the network admin or the network engineer, they put the configurations on the device and the technician, you're putting that device in place. If you're a technician on a small team, then you also could be configuring and racking and stacking your own devices. So this kind of was me when at my network technician role. So if it was a site that needed a device configured and put in, I was able to go ahead and take care of that. So this technician role, like I said, is one of many positions depending on what company you're at. Some companies, they don't want the technician configuring anything. And then at other companies, that technician pretty much does the same thing as the admin and engineers with a little couple of stipulations. Like I said, they may not have access to what those admins or engineers have, but that technician usually will have free range on the network besides messing with the cores or anything like that. And then also they're going to hand, handle troubleshooting and connectivity issues, maintaining that network infrastructure. So as a tech or anyone in networking, the main goal is to catch issues before they become a big problem. So being proactive instead of reactive. Day to day for a network administrator, like I said, it's going to include some of the same things as the technician. So both of these roles, you're going to have to do some sort of troubleshooting or supporting users on the network. There's no way to get around that. You're there to support your organization. But I think what the biggest difference is at this position is your projects. So your projects is what I think makes an IT professional valuable. That's, that's just my opinion. So a project is pretty much a series of tasks and activities aimed at achieving a specific goal within a defined timeline or budget. So an example could be upgrading all your networking devices to the same iOS or implementing a new technology on the network. So these examples could all be considered a project. And as you progress more, you usually tend to receive more advanced projects to complete. So at this network admin level, that's when you're getting into those projects that you may be able to add onto your resume if you're considering leaving. But a lot of times those projects is what's going to make you more valuable and what's going to make you pull in that higher pay, in my opinion. So next, let's look at the skills required for these two positions. So when it comes to the skills and education for both of these positions, I think you have a lot of options available to you. So one option is having a degree in networking and then landing the job after you graduate school. Another option is just getting the certification and then landing the position. So this could mean getting the Network Plus certification, getting the CCST networking certification. Both of those are ample for the network technician role. And then you can get the CCNA for the network administrator role. But also note that having a CCNA will not guarantee a network admin position. So without experience, you can very well land a networking tech or a lower position with a CCNA. The main goal is without experience is to get your foot in the door. So for example, when I graduated from school or community college back in 2008, I had a CCNA. It roughly took me about two years or a little bit more, close to three to land a role. So the role I landed, it wasn't a networking role. It was a computer operations role in healthcare. So having that CCNA got me the role, but then I still had to get in and work my way up to that networking role. I took the longer route, so don't, don't take the longer route. Try to get as fast as possible if that's your goal. But moral of the story, like I said, a cert may, guarantee, may not guarantee the job, but it would definitely help you get started on your journey. So to bring this episode to a close, the network technician and the network admin positions, they're pretty similar. Some of the subtle differences between them is going to boil down to the complexity of your issues and also the amount of responsibilities for each role. So someone that's in either of these positions, I think is on a great track to become a network engineer. So if that's your goal, like I said, try to get in the door with the network tech or maybe even if, even if you can't get the network tech, get something there a little lower, but the main thing, get in the door and then you can work your way up to that network engineer. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Hopefully you found some value in this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, you can follow me at Debt Free and IT. If you have any questions, you can email me at debtfreeandit at gmail.com or you can visit my website, debtfreeandit with Mike.com. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Peace.